Hey gang, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing a series and the series is taking these amazing, legendary, isolated vocal tracks or vocal stems. I'm doing an analysis, I'm doing a vocal tutorial, uh, I'm talking about how the recordings happened, uh, some of the lyrical content, uh, some of the backgrounds of the artists, etc. And just having a party over here, man, this is awesome for me, I just really am enjoying this. Just the intimacy and gosh, just to be, be able to peer in and take, you know, a, a a magnifying glass, you know, to this amazing, amazing stuff. So with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and do Janice Joplin. And uh, the song is Peace of My Heart. Now, I know I've done other stuff like this, but I've never done the isolated vocal version. So we're going to pick it apart. But there's a few things about Janice I want to mention before we get started. A lot of people think of her as Janice Joplin, and she's certainly that. Uh, and she has probably done more to influence, um, you know, rock female vocalists than maybe any other singer ever. Now, she certainly had kind of a gruffy voice um, at a James maybe was known for it at the same time or a little bit before. So there were some some rough, you know, gritty singers back in the day, but she certainly, you know, I'd say is a poster child for that. Um, but a lot of people think of her as being like a solo artist, but she wasn't. She was actually in two bands. Uh, the first band was the Cosmic Blues Band, uh, and then she did Full Tilt Boogie Band, I think it was called, something like a Full Tilt Boogie Band. But anyway, so those are bands she was in, and then they just, people just thought of her as Janice, right? But I want to just dive right into this and um, take a listen. We'll, we'll make some comments along the way. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Didn't I make you feel? Cool. Now, first of all, um, I want to talk about eras of music real quick for a second. And the first thing I want to say about it is you can tell this is, it sounds live, and um, that all the vocals are contiguous. It's not going into a studio and getting to do take after take or God forbid, you know, auto tune back then. There was no such a thing, of course. So um, what bands would do as early as early big band or even roaring 20s jazz, uh, you know, big band music and then on through the 50s, you know, Motown and then, you know, doo-wop and even into the late 60s and early 70s, um, including the Beatles, um, that bands would basically do take after take after take after take and they would pick the best of some takes. Now, in some cases like Led Zeppelin or whatever, they would do, you know, multiple takes and then they'd grab the chorus from one thing and the bridge from another and they'd cut the tape and take pieces of the takes that they liked best about the band. And, you know, that was a, that was a process. It's sort of what led to multi-track recording later. But, um, but especially starting in the Motown era, because that was really what emphasized this, was uh, 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 Gordy would take artists and make them... Uh, have like kind of a competition and whoever would you know get to get a top single the number one single or in the top 10 or whatever it was then they would be the or get in the top 10 they'd be the one to be allowed to record a record okay so if they got a song that was placed that that charted then gordy would go ahead and take you know that band and and, and put them in the um, in a recording studio and record an album with them so but they would have to do these takes live takes over and over and over again and so you can hear the tension you know you hear the distortion out of pitch stuff but the carbuncles and all that is what made it really cool so um that's what you're hearing here so f again straight out of the gate you're hearing just live singing um there's no second take this is you, it is what it is and you don't you're you get what you get, you don't throw fit. And um, and so we get the benefit of this ebb and flow of this living, breathing music instead of a lot of the processed, homogenized, auto-tune, cut, cut and paste chorus-y kind of music that we have today. So, and I'm not trying to you know diss that as much as just saying that, you know, back then again, it was raw, live, and breathing. Okay, so here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, for you singers out there, if you want to know how to do this, she covers her zone. No, come on, come on. She not, she's not going, come on. That's the way I would do it if it was me. But she's going, call. So call or come on, come on, come on, come on. Right? So that's her projection is very, oh, 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 oh. And you can hear that throughout the track. And let's continue. Here we go. And I'll make you feel. Like you are the only man. Okay, now you can tell how bluesy it is. Ironically, ironically, the bands that she in was was the Cosmic Blues Band, right, uh, and Full Tilt Boogie Band or Boogie Blues Band, and so her her soul is very kind of kind of barroom bluesy, you know. Didn't I make you feel like you were the only? Right, and she does sound like she's under the influence. If you really listen to her, she's kind of slurry, and she's kind of you know, kind of just 
psychedelically in the moment. Let's say it that way, all right? Here we go. Well, yeah, I did not give you nearly everything that a woman possibly can. They hear, yeah. You know, the microphone got distorted because the sound man wasn't prepared for how much she was going to lean into the mic. So she distorted the crap out of the mic and then she's got all this dynamic of volume in it and you can really, really hear that as well. Honey, you know I did. And each time I tell myself that I, what I think I've had enough. Okay, now, I know she did a lot of heroin. I know that she overdosed at age 27. But I want you guys to think about something because maybe you don't think about this like I do. Did you hear what I said? She overdosed at age 27. So I'm not exactly sure when this recording was. So it was either 27 or earlier, but that doesn't sound like a 27 year old's voice, does it? Sounds like someone kind of in their mid thirties that has smoked and drank a lot. Um, so she certainly had some either natural nodes or it's a lot of smoking, a lot of partying, a lot of you know staying up late and all the different travel that she did. Uh, took a toll, of course, she died at 27. Very, very young to die. And so um, when I hear this back and I want you to listen to this as we go on, does that sound like a 27 year old voice to you? Not to me. And the other thing too um, is the energy is really frenetic. Did that make you feel like you were the only man? <sighs> Darling, I did not give you everything that a woman possibly can. You know, it's kind of stalkery a little bit if you really think about it, right? Oh, but yeah. I'm gonna show you, baby. I'll that show a you. Woman can be tough. I want you to come on, come on, come on, come on and take it. Take another little piece of my heart. I could just kind of see her on say, ah, she's like giving it everything she's got. Come on, come on, come on and take it. Take another little piece of my heart now, baby. Right? Just the intensity. So I don't, I want to be careful how I say this. I don't think of Janice as being the greatest, you know, by the way, before I even say that part, I looked on Wikipedia and it called her a mezzo soprano and she's singing really low in the alto range. So whoever writes that stuff is really weird. She's not a mezzo soprano. She's, she's in alto. She's belting out some alto notes. I don't think I've ever heard her hit a C6. So I certainly wouldn't put her in the, in the soprano range, but nonetheless, um, so she's, you know, got this really, really intense frontal sound and, um, she, the way she's covering her vowels, it's really, come on, come on, do not make you feel right and you could just kind of hear the intensity of maybe some kind of drug that she was on that was an amphetamine right uh, upper uh, because the intensity of the energy is pretty extreme okay well, I was gonna say something about um when I said I don't want to I don't want to say this and, and have this taken the wrong way do I think of Janice as being the greatest female vocalist of all time for you know pop or blues vocalist? No, I really don't. You know, I don't. I think there's a lot of great singers. I like Susan Tedeschi or Tedeschi, however you want to say her name. Uh, to me, she I could personally prefer her singing. However, however, Janice did it first. And a lot of people came and copied her and maybe did it better later to some degree. Okay, not with the intensity and not with the legendary status she enjoys. But I want to point that out that I don't think that Janice was all that. Now, I remember seeing an interview of Jimi Hendrix, and ironically, I want to talk about him, of him even kind of saying, oh, Janice, I mean, she's, you know, she's good. Janice, there's a lot of, you know, cool people. And there were, man. I mean, up, up the ranks came, you know, Ann Wilson and up the ranks. Came, I mean, there was a Susie Quattro and there was all kinds of people that, that were very interesting, great rock singers at the time that were coming through the ranks. Uh, later, you know, Pat Benatar and others. But I bring this up because ironically, when I said Jimi Hendrix said that, is that, do I think Jimi Hendrix is the greatest rock guitarist of all time? Well, no, he was good. You know, he was amazingly legendary for pioneering his sound uh, and other people sort of came along and maybe did it better, but Jimi did it first. And that's why they get the kudos and the credit for being the ones to do it first and deserve the legendary status for pioneering a sound. So uh, I, I want to be clear on, do I think she's just, you know, all that from a technical standpoint or a pitch standpoint or all? No, but she's Janice and she set the precedent for a lot of people and has probably done more to inspire more young female or female vocalists than maybe any other singer alive, save, you know, for Ann Wilson, save the grace of Ann Wilson or, or someone in that ilk. Okay, hey, let's continue. Have another little piece of my heart now, baby. Well, you know you got it. If it makes you feel good, oh 
Now, the other thing is, tell me straight, when you hear her sing, do you like believe every word she says? She's so amazingly uh, gifted at telling her story in the way she does it that she kind of doesn't really care if you listen to her or not. She's gonna just pour her heart out on her sleeve and just leave it all in the field. And that's also another thing that made her so great is that whether it was Bobby McGee or any of her big hits, you know, you listen to every word, you wanna know what she's saying. You, and even if you don't understand what she's saying, you feel what she's feeling, right? It's interesting. You're out on the streets looking good and baby deep down in your heart. I guess you know that it ain't right. No. Sorry for, uh, sorry for stopping so many times, but I've listened to so many versions of this song and I don't think she's ever sung the song the same twice. And I can't say the same for most singers out there, even including myself. You learn a song, you do it night after night, you sing it the same way, you do it the same way. Well, she was very spontaneous every time the band played it in a different tempo. The band, you know, she sang it with a different energy. She uh, had her phrasing. Sometimes they were really fast and choppy. Sometimes she slowed them down. But every single time she did the song, she did it differently. And that's also very, very interesting for me as I analyze. Okay, now one more thing, sorry. Now, if you notice too, the intensity of her voice from her diaphragmatic support, never, 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 you know, she's, she's always got this intensity in her sound. She doesn't let up. So she's constantly using her stomach. So her endurance and um, you know, her ability to last long periods of time is pretty remarkable too, because I've heard that she did, you know, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, some, one, one person said she did a two and a half hour set singing like this. Could you imagine the energy required to sing two and a half hours of this kind of intense music? That's pretty remarkable. All the time, and each time I tell myself that I, when I can't stand the pain, but when you hold me in your arms, I sing it once again. I said, come on, come on, come on, come on, yeah, take it, take another little piece of my heart. Okay, cool. Now, I wore the shirt deliberately because it's almost kind of a dress. Um, because I did a version of this with two clients. One was Aliona. You can check out the version I did with Aliona. Actually, three. Uh, Zia Mara did a version herself. It's on her channel. And I just recently did one with Kayla Reeves, one of the main, if not the main lead vocalist for Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I will put that in the description and I want you to see how Kayla did because Kayla owned it, man. So did Aliona. They all, in fact, all three of them did a great job. All, all three of them. But, but Kayla comes more from that school of just being a really great soul singer with a lot of great uh, tone and distortion, natural, naturally gifted, great tone. Um, naturally, everyone has to work on it, but over time she developed a really great tone. Uh, but anyway, so I'll put that in the description. I want you to check it out because it's really worthy and see how close we got to Janice because um, I'd like to do a shout out to that because she just did an awesome job. <laughs> Break another little bit of my heart, I die, yeah. 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 Right. I can just kind of see the kind of the reeling of you know what's going on with her at that moment. Have another little piece of my heart, oh baby. Yeah. Well, you know you got it, Shine if it makes you feel good. And two, um. Typically, when people are drunk, <laughs> this is a weird thing to say, but it's true, they trail, like, yeah, yeah, ho. you know, so people that are stoned or drunk, they kind of trail off on their phrases and stuff, and you hear Janice doing that quite a bit, so like I said, she was always kind of on something, I don't know what she was on here, but now there's another little section here, I'm gonna go to it real quick, it is one, two, three, kaboom, uh, the end of the song, and I just gotta I make a couple, come, couple more closing comments. Come. Now, because of the confidence in the way that she sings and the authority in the way that she sings, even when she's off a little bit, we don't really notice it. Like, you don't say, oh, that's pitchy, but it is. Isn't that interesting? Like some singers, when they're pitchy, it's, ooh, that's pitchy, and you're like, you cringe. 
When she's pitchy, we forgive her just because of the, the authority and the confidence that she sings with and her distorted voice and, and, and again, her phrasing and the stabby phrases, the way she sings, the blues and the soul. So there's so much life in the way she's singing, the way she sells her story and presents her art um, that we don't really think about the pitch, right? Isn't that kind of interesting? And there are a few artists that do that. And David Bowie, there's all kinds of guys that are really pitchy in the way they sing, but we don't like really, Mick Jagger, we don't really think so much about it because of the authority in the way that they present their art. And she certainly is one of those people. Have another little piece in my heart now, baby. Hey. You know you got it. I like that. Wait, could she be considered one of the first scream artists? Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> Maybe. Bring another little bit in my heart. The dawn in the yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? She's pitchy, but we don't really think about it. It's just Janice. You're like vibing and going, I just like the vibe. I'll just listen Have to it. Have another little piece in my heart now, baby. <laughs> you know you got it. Shine of it makes you feel good. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, gang, and check out my next video.